Hey YouTube. Mosquitoes are getting us already. <laughs> so yeah. today we're gonna talk about what are we gonna talk about? Let's talk Ooh. about comparing the mid-drive bikes to each other. Uh, the differences in motors, uh, they're about, although electric claims that's 110 newton meters, which is, I think, roughly about 80, 80 uh, pounds of torque. I remember exactly, but it's close to half of what it's rated. Um, and the Bosch line's rated at 40 pounds of torque, 250 watts, 500 watts. Uh, I don't know. Somewhere peak is going to be somewhere around 1,000 watts on this, and peak on this is 250 watts because it's a European design bike. That's the legal limit in Europe is 250 watts. Legal speed is, I believe, 32 kilometers. This bike is set. Once you get to 19.7, you get no assistance anymore. It's all you. Um, this bike is, the Trek is rated at 100 RPMs, as well as the electric rated at 100 RPMs. That's the fastest you can turn the crank and still receive any kind of output. Once you get above it, the motor will, will shut the output off and it's, it's all you. So both bikes are similar in that way, except for the electric is, <laughs> thought I fell down. The electric <laughs> is, uh, it's got a higher power rating and more torque, supposedly. Uh, I don't see it when we compare the bikes. Uh, I'm using 100% on touring. It gives me 100% of whatever I'm torque I'm putting up to to a limit, which I think is 30 or is 25 pounds of torque when you're running at touring. Karen's, I don't know where it is, but it. it in touring, uh, I can go up the hills faster. She usually lags behind me when we're going up a hill. Well, she doesn't shift either, though. Yeah, I don't. I don't usually shift, and I slow down because most of the hills are right after we cross a road. Um, so I. I use my hearing more than I do my eyesight. If I don't hear anything, because my bike is really quiet, you don't really hear it. But I can't hear or see, so. <laughs> yeah, Karen got new glasses and she's already put her old glasses back on. Yeah. And it's probably a smart choice going out for a bike ride when her vision's blurry with the new ones on. I had to, I had to switch back to my old ones um, on the way home from the eyeglass place because my eyes were feeling strained and uh, I was getting a little headache. But um, I guess that can happen when you change um, prescriptions. So I'll keep trying them and I'm sure that I'll get used to them. And I do believe the Bosch motor is a lot more efficient than the, the Bose or Bros motor on the, uh, I, I'm not sure it's a Bros motor, but it may be. I think that it's probably manufactured by electric by a name brand, semi-name brand company. Probably the same people that make their uh, motor for their, uh, the regular uh, hub drive. So, yeah, I think efficiency wise, my 11 amp hour battery, 11.4 or 11.6 amp hour battery, would almost go as far on PAS level three that she rides in, almost as far. She might have me by a couple miles, but it ain't gonna be much. Um, 
to give you an idea, when I ride my electric and do the same route, I usually get home with 50 volts. When she rides that and does the same route with both batteries on, she ends up with 51 point, almost 52 volts. So it's not very efficient in my thoughts. If I, that's probably used probably five amps of the 20 amps available. So, and mine uses uh, a, is another funny thing is her display shows much more information than my displays. I have no how, no idea what the finish voltage is without going and grabbing a, uh, a multimeter and figuring out which two pins are the actual plus and negative on the battery. So I have no idea what my finish voltage is. It just shows how many bars are left. Um, another thing I noticed between the two R2 electric bikes is the battery sag is much less on the X Premium than it is on the regular electric. Uh, on my bike, uh, I get back and it's probably sagged down to 48 volts when I stop and within a few seconds it's recovered to 50 volts. Whereas hers, uh, and the longer you stay stopped on the, uh, the 1.0, the longer the more it recovers whereas I noticed on hers bike if I go out and turn it on after it's set overnight it's at the same voltage it was when she stopped so the battery sag issue is a little bit different on that so it don't seem to sag uh, so I imagine that the usable battery life is going to be a lot more on the two batteries than on the one on the electric because part of the problem people have is they can't completely drain the battery because on a single battery system because the battery sags enough that it shuts the bike off so with two batteries that sag issue is going to be greatly reduced and you should be able to use more of the battery capacity I don't know what the battery capacity on uh, how many miles I could run this uh, trek when we get here usually it says we have I have 29 miles left of range and I tend to believe it because I've ridden 23 miles and had the same leftover battery status as I do riding the 11 miles so I don't know I you can figure roughly nine miles per bar on this bike and you have five bars so 40 50 miles yeah so around 50 miles of range so and if you rode it on echo uh, you're only getting 40 percent it's basically helping you overcome the weight of the extra weight of the bike and the resistance in the drivetrain um, I can measure the resistance in the drivetrain on the Trek. I cannot on the Bros motor because it has a ratcheting mechanism in the drive system, whereas it has the only ratcheting mechanisms on the cassette. So there's a few differences, but as far as if I buy the 725 watt battery for this bike I guarantee you to go farther than the electric would buy a long ways you had double almost the battery size I would imagine the range is going to be all in the 90 to 100 mile range on the second setting which basically keeps up with the electric uh, the uh, way it measures your speeds the same on the both bikes has sensors on the chain stay on the back of the back of the bike and a magnet on the wheels and it measures speed the same way shifters how it senses the shift on this bike i don't know i could probably find out but there's no visible way for it to show how it uh, interrupts the power to the motor because 
the cables are run inside the frame and not on the outside of the frame like the electric. The electric has a shift sensor underneath the down tube. So bikes basically are generally a lot alike, but not really. <laughs> Hydraulic brakes on both of them. I would say these work better and smoother than the ones on the electric, and that's because they use crappy rotors on that bike. And, it's all Greek to me. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, Karen, this is your first ride this week? I believe so, yeah. Since Saturday. Well, it's Saturday and Monday, Tuesday, I didn't go because I wasn't feeling well. And she don't like to ride when it's windy either, and it's, it's windy today. It's really windy today, but it hasn't bothered me. Yeah, I... A lot of the things that would have kept me from riding a regular bike don't, I don't consider on. Like if on a day like this on a regular bike, it, although I might have went for a ride, it wouldn't have been any fun. The, the resistance going into the wind is like, slows you down quite a bit, you know. Whereas an electric bike, it slows you down, but eh, just turn up the power if you don't like it. Did I go Monday? I don't know. I don't. I, think I, might have, I don't remember. I know yesterday I didn't go because I was pretty depressed. We had a the little community of Greenville, just a few miles up the road, um, had quite a tragedy uh, Tuesday evening. Three uh, young teenage boys, 13 to 14 years old, uh, were walking down a road at 9:40 in the evening, 9:50, and. Which is dark here. Which, yeah, pretty pretty much dark. And the road was being, it had construction uh, going on it, so it was all tore up dirt, um, so you wouldn't expect a, a vehicle to be going fast. Um, but anyway, they a vehicle hit them, and it was a hit and run. Um, one of the three was killed. Um, and uh, so yeah, it's, it's been pretty tragic. Um, it looks like maybe they did uh, find the vehicle uh, today, just a short time before we left for our ride, so. No, they picked it up at 9.25. Oh, last night? N no, this morning. Oh, this morning, okay. So, so yeah, at least hopefully, um, you know, justice will be served and, and the families can get a little bit of um, resolve, um, but still, um, they they definitely need prayers, um, not only the family for the of the boy who was killed, but also the other two families that um, have boys that are, are injured and, and hospitalized still, yeah, non-life-threatening non injuries. Yeah, they still. weren't critical, they were but they were injured. But um, the emotional injuries, um, suffering is probably going to be a whole lot worse than than what uh, the physical um, injuries and suffering is. So, so they all need our prayers. If you could just kind of keep them in your prayers, these these boys and their families, that would that would be really nice. And. It what, one thing I've noticed over the last three years since the beginning of COVID, one, we had all the race riot crap going on that uh, caused policemen to quit in groves. So local enforcements are shorthanded and they're not enforcing the traffic laws like they used to. So we have people that are completely crazy. They don't, they act like they've didn't even go to driving school. They don't follow the laws and they don't drive sensibly anymore. You well, said- It seems like everybody's high. high. <laughs> yeah, it, it look, looks like everybody's either just, drunk or high. Ju just that day during the day, we were in Greenville, um, a short ways from where the accident happened. And we were at a stoplight and we were just both shaking our heads. It turned green and the car in front of us, he just sat there with his head kind of half. He wasn't on his phone. <laughs> wasn't on his phone, just sitting there like, oh, <laughs> what am I supposed to do? So 
Don honked the horn, and then we had another one that almost sideswiped us, and I was just like, wow, what's going on? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's pretty scary out there. Yep. People just, if there's no consequences, people, even good people, forget that there's laws to, that they're supposed to follow, so... And there isn't any consequences. I, I mean, we rarely see anybody ever being pulled over. And if they are, well, they usually make the newspaper because of how fast they're going. Well, here's one for you. <laughs> What's it been? A couple years ago, our daughter um, had a gal living with her. Um, she thought it was her girlfriend, but found out that <laughs> she wasn't at all interested in her. But anyway, she went out um, under the influence of drugs <laughs> with, my, with my daughter's vehicle, um, totaled it, um, didn't get hurt, but totaled the vehicle, never had owned a driver's license, never had never owned a been driver's licensed. licensed. Um, and this was like her second or third time that she'd had an accident with got, driving somebody's car. She'd actually been charged and put in jail for it before. And it was during COVID, of course. She didn't get anything, not even a slap on the hand. They didn't uh -huh. even make her pay restitution for the car. No, my daughter was at a complete loss um, with no car. They they didn't have insurance on it well they had liability well liability but um yeah, yeah. <laughs> they so yeah it's just got to be a crazy world it, it, and getting crazier all the time especially since covid things have really changed yeah it's just socially everybody's at their throats racially socially and otherwise it's, it's, it makes you want to move somewhere where you don't have to deal with people anymore. <laughs> Up to the Upper Peninsula. <laughs> well, even there, there's a draw. Sounds, yeah, the drama. It still there. sounds so good to go live off grid in the UP. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah, they, they have drama up there too. I just was reading uh, in a small community where the population is really small up there in Chippewa County where we go camping on UTV and they had an active shooter up there that was going around shooting people. Wow. They, they asked people to stay indoors until they caught him. I don't know what, I didn't see any postings. And qu quite frankly, we don't get the local news and I'm not sure I'd watch it either way. <laughs> I feel safer around the bears than around people anymore. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, we got a bike cyclist coming. I see that. We got our bikes kind of parked in the road. Just because we don't want to park them under this tree because the mosquitoes are so bad as soon as you go under the tree. Oh, my. Hi. So. That was an old bike. That, was, that bike was from the 80s. Yep, um, so life is getting to be uh, less of a joy when you have to leave your house. Maybe that's why so many people just don't want to leave their house anymore. But, <clears throat> hate to be a killjoy, but that's just the way it is. You get used to it. I'm sure our parents thought the same thing when they were our age, that life was crazy. That people were stupid and did things that they shouldn't. But I think legalizing weed in this country was the biggest mistake they could ever do. They, there's some lessons that they could have gleaned from when it was, wasn't illegal before. But we have to learn the same lesson, whatever, 80, 90 years later. And the fact of the matter is that I believe that people that eventually people will screw it up for the ones that enjoy doing it because they'll just get tired of dealing with all the drugs look at oregon passed a law that made 
any hard drug, just a misdemeanor, and they don't prosecute for it, and now they're having problems. They can't even build clinics for uh, people fast enough anymore up there that there's so many addicted people that they can't even, when they're sentenced to uh, rehab, they can't even send them to rehab because it's such a big problem. Yeah. Did I get my phone out, my dear? I, I didn't get your phone out. <laughs> yeah, but so we uh, are going to get... I forgot my water today. One of the things that I told you in the last video that I was on, to be sure and remember your water, well, <laughs> this old lady forgot hers today, so I'm kind of thirsty. Do you want mine? No, it doesn't have flavor yeah, in it. <laughs> You can't drink plain water. That <laughs> might kill her. And it's probably warm. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll... It's a nice day out here. A little bit muggy, but not too bad. 80, yeah, the wind is gone now. 80, no, it's not gone. It's just not... You're not seeing it as much. 82 degrees today, and we're going to go home, and I think we're supposed to have dinner with our... Yeah. Stepdaughter, I but, to see if they but I would. They are kind they of. Both started new jobs. Well, one yester started yesterday, and one started today. Um, so. When it comes they're, to, they're going to be tired. <laughs> yeah, when it comes to, to <laughs> plans, they're kind of <laughs> they're, flaky. Well, and they're not used to working. Yeah, that they. Hard. They'll, so. they'll call us and tell us they're coming over for dinner or something. And 10 minutes later, call us back and tell us they changed their mind. Well, that's all right. We can make our own dinner. Yeah. To have them cook for us, though, is a, is a real treat. Yeah, is a real treat until I have to do the dishes. usually di he does all the cooking. <laughs> I, until I have to do the dishes. Yeah, they, they like to use a lot of dishes when they cook. <laughs> and they don't do the, wash the dishes afterwards. We should say if you're gonna come over to our house and cook then you gotta wash the dishes afterwards okay folks well just take care yeah it was just Have a, a little wonderful week weekend yeah it's almost the weekend so take care be safe god bless yep god bless y'all